Hey everyone. Yeah, this isn't my usual intro, but I have some bad news. I know a lot of you were waiting for my opinions on why I despise John Redcorn. Sadly, I'm not able to make a video like that. See, John Redcorn is a Native American, and Native Americans have minority status in the US. I've been informed by several seemingly unconnected parties that white people cannot make fun of minorities. Yeah, I understand, you're, you're frustrated, but we have to be considerate of those less fortunate than us. Maybe someday, when we reach true equality, us white people will be able to talk about other races without it being the worst thing in the universe that anyone has ever done. But until that day arrives, I'll just have to hold my... Wait a second. I'm black! I can make fun of whoever I want! Hey, hello, how do you do? Shady Dude Rex here. In my last King of the Hill video, I made a passing comment about how I didn't like the character John Redcorn. Well, 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 Jahan Redcorn. And like every other passing comment, you intellectuals demanded a video be made on the subject. And I was like, okay. I mean, I'm a YouTuber. Making long rants on stuff we don't like is our specialty. But before we dive into exactly what makes John Redcorn the worst human being that ever existed, we first have to take a look at some backstory for those people who randomly clicked on the video without having ever seen a single episode of King of the Hill. You know who you are, and you know that you're weird. In King of the Hill, there's the character Dale Gribble, one of Hank's best friends and the comic relief of pretty much every episode he's in, even ones that star himself. Sometime before the start of the show, Dale married Nancy, this super attractive weather girl. After they got married, Nancy met John Redcorn, a Native American masseur, and the two had an affair that went on for years that everybody but Dale knew about. Nancy even gave birth to John Redcorn's son, but everyone pretends that he's Dale's and neither Dale nor Joseph are the wiser. And this was a running joke of the show for a good many seasons. Dale was always suspicious of literally everything and everybody except the clear betrayal going on behind his back. Oh man, look at that John Redcorn, he sure can swing, woo! Eventually, Nancy and John did break it off. When it came to Joseph and John Redcorn's relationship, John was like a good family friend, constantly watching Joseph from a distance. Now you might think that alone is enough to get me to hate John Redcorn, but not really. Someone doing something immoral in a story isn't going to make me hate them if it's presented in an entertainingly enough way. Do you hate the Joker who murders people? No, because it makes his character interesting. Do you hate Bender who steals from orphans? No, because it makes his character funny. Even in King of the Hill itself, there are plenty of scumbags who've done objectively worse than John Redcorn, but because of how they're presented, I'm more entertained by their faults than annoyed. It also depends on the person, you know? No matter how funny it might be to everyone else, there will be people out there who will never like Cotton, because misogyny is just too personal of an issue for them. So why is John Redcorn the big one for me? What fault does he have that made me find him more detestable than enjoyable? Well, while John Redcorn does do plenty of things throughout the show that furthers my rage towards him, there's one episode in particular that seals the deal. Spin the choice. And yes, before you jump down my throat, I know this is a Thanksgiving episode, and I should have done this last month, but th th some of us are busy. So the episode starts with Hank and Bobby eating breakfast when Hank presents a gift to Bobby. The turkey knife! Hank lets Bobby know that this year he'll be in charge of carving one of the turkeys for their Thanksgiving dinner, and Bobby is ecstatic. If you know King of the Hill pretty well, you know this is a very significant moment. Hank and Bobby rarely ever share the same enthusiasm for the same things, but Hank is extremely conservative and Bobby loves food, so Thanksgiving is the perfect opportunity for them to bond. The scene transitions to Dale and John Redcorn, who I'm now realizing is never just called John in this show, talking about their legal case. See, because John is a part of what was once the Anasazi tribe, Anasazi? Anasi? How do you pronounce that? He believes the government owes him back the land it took from his people. It's a little confusing, a lot of people act like the land was taken from John personally, but if I'm reading it right, he's talking about things that happened centuries ago. So John is working with Dale to sue the government in order to get quote unquote his land back. After they're talking, Joseph walks in and John tries to bond with him. Hey, why don't I give you a ride to school? Nah, I'll ride my bike. Oh, uh, Dad, my bike chain is busted. Yeah, dude, he's a kid who barely knows you. Hank is in his life more than you. Why would he want to spend time with you? Nancy comes in and proves she's just the worst. Too much time goes by without me seeing him. Thank God for the holidays. I just don't think it's a good idea you're coming by this Thanksgiving. 
Alright, so whenever I bring up how much I detest John Redcorn, I get a lot of pushback from people who say Nancy is worse, as she's the one who's actually in a relationship and chose not to be faithful. Nancy might be worse, key emphasis on might, but I don't think it's for that reason. See, when it comes to the affair, Nancy wants to completely sweep everything under the rug, because that makes it easier for her. She sees that John Redcorn is complicating that by wanting to spend time with Joseph and is asking that he not come over for Thanksgiving. She is not at all empathizing with John's situation. Don't get me wrong, I don't feel bad for John Redcorn and I 100% agree with Nancy when she says that Dale is Joseph's father, not John. But it's pretty clear that Nancy isn't even trying to be fair to Redcorn's perspective here, mainly because she still gets to see Joseph and keep her marriage. She's getting a free out while John is left to suffer. And John trying to reduce his suffering is getting in the way of her free out. The episode continues and John Redcorn is speaking at Tom Landry Middle School. Our land was taken from us by the white men. Mr. Redcorn? Yes. Are you sure it's the white man who did all that stuff? Oh my wow. The white kid is more offended at what was done to the Native Americans than the Native American. <laughs> Sometimes King of the Hill was so ahead of its time, it's scary. Oh, I should probably mention there is a B story of Peggy coming up with a new game for Thanksgiving, which is where the episode gets its title from, but it's not really relevant, and personally, I don't find it really interesting. But, Luann does make an adorable laugh here. <laughs> so that's cool. Back to the plot, John Redcorn wants to give Bobby and Joseph a lift home, hoping to spend time with Joseph, but only Bobby takes the offer. Where's Joseph going? Who knows? That kid's a freaking mystery. I waited two and a half hours. Dude, even if you drive him, he still needs to find a way to get his bike home. Bobby is still curious about the struggles between John Redcorn's people and the white man. John Redcorn then claims that it not only happened, but they're still doing it today. Wait, what? Especially after all you say the white man did to the Indians. You don't know the half of it. The white man is still doing it. Oh, okay. So because you slept with a married woman and now you can't be with your son, this is somehow Dale stealing what's yours. Hey, remember my last King of the Hill video? I said something along the lines of, Victim mentality is something I bring up from time to time because I absolutely despise it. Yeah, one of the reasons why John Redcorn reaches the tippy top of my list of hateable characters is because he is filled to the brim with the victim mentality. It's not his fault that any of this is happening. It's not his actions that caused this complicated situation. It's Dale's fault for being married to the woman he's attracted to. Dale, who has been nothing but a wholesome friend to John Redcorn, who is even helping him with his case against the government, is the one stealing from John Redcorn because John can't be a father to Joseph. And that's just the beginning, dear viewer. For you see, because John Redcorn has a personal gripe with Dale, he influences Bobby with tales of the past. And if you know Bobby, you know exactly where this is headed. Dad, you and your white people stole hundreds of thousands of acres from John Redcorn, and now you celebrate by frying a turkey? Good gravy, does this tick me off? So let's ignore what Thanksgiving means and what happened in history and blah 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 blah. John Redcorn, because of a personal grief he had with Dale that he himself caused, decided to fill Bobby with that hatred by claiming it's because of history. No matter what one might think of the tradition of Thanksgiving, Bobby's hatred of it is falsely placed. He's being influenced by someone with selfish reasons claiming it's for historical ones. Of course, Hank isn't having any of it and goes to confront John Redcorn. If I stole all that land, would I be living on a dang eighth of an acre? And what does John Redcorn do after he's accused of brainwashing Bobby? Well, he has a victim mentality, so I imagine he starts, oh, there he goes. <laughs> I want my son back. He was never your son! Sure, he's got your DNA in him, but Dale is the one who raised him. You might have gone to a game of his or given him a present during the holidays, but that's something any neighbor or relative can do. A father does more than what you've done. You don't get to barge into his life, claim he's yours, and start throwing hissy fits and pity parties, especially since this is your fault. I mean, yeah, Nancy had a big part to play in it too, but all of this is the result of your actions. But Shady, didn't you say in this video that Bojack was the one who ruined Dr. Champ's life? Couldn't we say the same for Nancy and John Redcorn? 
First of all, this is a bad video. I didn't explain my argument well at all. Second, this was a semantics argument, not a moral one. I was saying that technically, Bojack is the one who brought consequences to Dr. Champ's life when it wasn't his responsibility to do so. So technically, he's the one who ruined it. I wasn't saying Dr. Champ didn't deserve everything he got. And finally, even if you apply that logic here, it doesn't work because A, Nancy does have a responsibility over Joseph, and B, there are ways that John Redcorn can get out of this. It's just that all those ways involve telling Dale about his affair, and he doesn't want to do that because he would have to face other consequences that he's not willing to face. But wait, there's more! So the Thanksgiving dinner happens and Bobby sets up a protest. John Redcorn shows up because Bobby invited him, but once Nancy sees him... Hank, what's John Redcorn doing here? Would you mind kicking him out? Wow, you really are trying to prove that you're worse than John Redcorn, aren't you? Well, it's not gonna work on me, sister, because look! Hello, Bobby. How was a good fight? Well, Mr. Redcorn, I found... Hey, this is Joseph. Yep, he's definitely number one. So John once again tries to talk to Joseph, but Nancy once again informs him that Dale is his father. Before things get too awkward, Dale shows up and tells John Redcorn that the government is offering him a settlement of 12 acres of land, to which John finds as an insult considering he asked for several hundred thousand. Upset at both Dale for nothing he did and the government for stuff other people did in the past, he makes things awkward for everyone. Because if John Redcorn's having a bad time, everyone needs to have a bad time. To the white men who steals our land and steals our sons. Hank, feeling the awkwardness, allows Bobby to have his say. And Bobby, in probably one of the best forms of ironic karma I have ever seen in a show, does this. The Anasazi tribe from this region celebrated their most festive occasions by eating the body of their enemies. So today we salute the Native American cannibal or people eater. Oh man, you eat people? Joseph, don't listen to him. That was over 700 years ago. Get your hands off me, you cannibal freak. It's so beautiful. Any cultural anthropologist will tell you that the Anasazi tribe last practiced cannibalism over 700 years ago. Oh, okay. So it's fine for you to get upset at everyone around you for something their ancestors did, but when we judge you for what your ancestors did, it's suddenly bad. And this is the final nail on the head for John Redcorn's unlikability. He's a major hypocrite. The one trait that is disgusting on almost every character you put it on. And since we're talking about hypocrisy, John, you keep complaining that the white man stole stuff from you, yet for years you slept with someone else's wife. So, the rest of the episode plays out. Nancy realizes that keeping Joseph from John Redcorn wasn't fair. Joseph learns to be more understanding of John Redcorn. Bobby learns that you shouldn't celebrate a culture just because that culture was victimized in the past, and he pretty quickly lets go of his Thanksgiving hatred. It was slightly rushed. John Redcorn feels better since Nancy compromised with him, so he's willing to compromise with the other things in his life. He can't be just his father, but he can help Joseph through Dale. He takes the 12 acres the government offers him mainly so he can pass it on to Joseph via Dale's death. And Peggy? Well, she didn't learn anything because her gang was a huge hit. And that is why I absolutely despise the character that is John Redcorn. He's filled with the victim mentality. He doesn't care how his influence affects those around him, going so far as to ruin another family's holiday because he's upset at his own life and he's an absolute hypocrite. Admittedly, these traits of John Redcorn are most extreme in this episode, but don't think it's the only time he's acted like this. Dude sold out Hank to Dale just because Nancy was involved. But I think I've made my point. John Redcorn sucks. And that's a fact. But I know not everybody's gonna agree with that. Like I said, some vices are more personal, and for some, the good in John Redcorn will appeal more than the bad. So what are your thoughts? Do you agree with me that John Redcorn is awful, just the worst person in King of the Hill, or does someone else still reign supreme? Comments are a thing, and they help in circumstances like these. This has been Shady Durags. So long. Farewell. Mad Vita said. Goodbye.